you for tuning in to another episode of Trending with the Tribune. I'm your host, Khalees Stephens, and today we're with the Office of Emergency Management Team. We're going to start off talking to Deputy Director Chief Swan. Can you just give us your role and what you do first? Uh, yes, well, uh, for as, as far as the Office of Emergency Management, I am the Director. Um, now, my title, of course, you know, as you noticed, it was a fire. I am a, a, a deputy for the Nashville Fire Department. I'm the chief of staff, but I am the director for Office of Emergency Management. And my role, basically, uh, when it comes to this office, um, as a director, any time an incident or, or, or something takes place in the city, this is where the hub, where everybody comes, and that means the infrastructure of Nashville. Fire Department, Police, Public Works, you know, NES, Red Cross, I could keep going on schools, it's the infrastructure. And uh, when, a, when a situation takes place, but one of the things that the Office of Emergency Management does, they look at that circumstance, no matter what it is, and they say, okay, what do we need to eradicate, take, take care of that situation? And if whatever we need, we invite the parties here to take care of it. If it's a, if it's a for instance, say we have a, uh, a, a tornado uh, w uh, warning uh, and the possibility of getting hit by a tornado. So what we do is look at uh, what time is it, when will it hit, what's the possibility. Uh, you know, we're gonna, we know we're going to need you know, PD, we're going to need fire department, we're going to need public works, we're going to need NES, we're going to need, but do we need metro schools? Well, that determines if, if, if it's after hours or not, you know, the parks department. So, in short, what the Office of Emergency Management does, they evaluate the circumstance, and then they, de then they de determine what, what we need to take care of it, and then we invite them here. Now, this is what we call the war room. And here, um, all the parties come here, we look at the situation, the circumstance, uh, and together, collectively, we use our resources to try to take care of it. Um, it's a place, um, because most of the time when we have incidents that are bigger than one department, for instance, if it's a typical house fire, then we know it's just it's basically the National Fire Department. And we may need PD, uh, the police department, for, for traffic. But if it's a flood event or if it's a, uh, we may have snow or ice or something, then it's bigger than just one department. So we have to bring all the departments here and then determine what, what things we need to do to try to take care of that situation. So what are some of the minor uh, natural disasters that you guys handle? Well, uh, I think the things that we mostly deal with is weather incidents, uh, you know, from, uh, from either uh, from tornadoes, snow, uh, flooding. Those are the things that we, we mostly uh, we deal with typically all the time. And uh, we, we work closely with the National Weather Service. Uh, we have people with inside the department and if I would, I would like to just introduce the team here. At the, um, and there's so many more, but these are some of the key players. Um, and the uh, chief uh, survey, is, he runs the daily operations here at the office. And uh, then you have Scott Harris, who is our, he's pretty much our guru as far as our field person. He's been here over 20 years, and he's pretty much dealt with every situation we've had. So he's just a big resource tool. Um, uh, and very valuable. Then we have Heidi, who actually, she is our planner. And um, under her, um, there's something called the SIMP, uh, and she'll explain that to you. And the SIMP plan is basically where uh, it is an actual plan for the city of Nashville uh, to take care of certain incidents that take place. If there's a mass casualty, uh, we need to evacuate the city. Who and what, you know, who, what, where, and what they do, and it's in that plan. It's, it's uh, actually revived every uh, five years. Um, so she has a, a great deal. She deals with all the infrastructure individually to put this plan together. Um, so it's the Office of Emergency Management is a small office uh, com compiled of um, 12 full-time personnel, and then we have a volunteer staff of about 58 people. And uh, they do some remarkable th uh, things. We deal from diving, um, missing people, to again some of the other things that we talked about earlier, from, uh, nat natural disasters and everything. It's a, it's just a big melting pot of, um, of resource tools that what we do here. You know? But it's a small office, but we do an incredible job of bringing everybody together to try to help 
in the situation. So I know that y'all help the greater Nashville, but have y'all ever reached out to like um, natural disasters in other states like Hurricane Harvey or Irma? Have y'all ever responded to anything like that? We actually have, and I'm going to let uh, actually my operations uh, 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 person, which is uh, chief uh, survey, sort of deal with that because we did go to uh, Harvey and Irma. So. Yes, sir. Thank you. So yes, we did uh, Harvey and, Ir and Irma. Uh, you talked about reaching out, and that's uh, exactly what we did. So the way that rolls out is when that state is affected, their state EMA will reach out and call TEMA, which is the, the mothership for what we do for our state. We handle Nashville, they handle the state, and they reached out to us and said, can you put this type of team together? Well, at that point, we, we get our resources together and we're, we're, where we fall short, uh, maybe by manpower or a specially type piece of equipment, then we reach out to our district, which is uh, several counties involved, and we put that team together. That took about 48 hours this time. We had very little time to get ready. And then we sent that team out the door to go to Texas and Florida. And what type of team was it? It was a type, uh, a type one swift water team it's because there was so much flooding there they needed more of us uh, dealing with uh, you know swift water type of incidents for uh, and that's the team that we actually sent to uh, texas yes and it was compiled of uh, different Four, 48 people mm -hmm. were involved and uh, that was from metro davidson county and the surrounding counties put that team together and sent them out the door so everybody had to have like swift water rescue certification some of them were divers uh, then we had to send a complement of mechanics to go down to work on the boats if something were to happen. Uh, medical staff from the fire department went down. Uh, National Fire Department actually sent an ambulance down, fully staffed to help with that render aid there for the team and for local response uh, for the people that were affected. So they had made 50 uh, rescues within the first eight hours that they showed up. Wow. Yeah. So uh, so that coordination effort. Is, is a huge part of what we do and it's also part of our planning process too uh, we have this thing called homeland security district 5 that partners with us and that's all the local counties around us that uh, mutual aid agreement to be able to respond either here locally or if it's a team of tasking uh, to go out of state yes ma'am wow and i'm sure heidi you had a lot to do with getting um you know people to respond to the harvey and um, Irma Hurricane. So can you just tell me a little bit about how you plan for the Office of Emergency and explain a little bit about this nervous system? Uh, the nerve system. <laughs> nerve system, nerve. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I mean, in regards to putting the teams together, they're, for the most part, already trained up to the level they need to be. So the different departments that would be responsible for going um, already have the levels basically predetermined. Um, so we know what level we have of swift water teams, we know what level we have for structural collapse teams. So we already know all that. So it's just a matter of availability um, on the resources and the staff personnel. Um, the, the touchy part of that is a manpower issue because we still have our local response responsibility to our city. So the, the delicate part of that is, is getting those people without uh, putting ourselves in a situation where we're short. So that's the beautiful part of the planning process and having those uh, credentials already established that we can reach out to the surrounding counties and pull that manpower so we don't tax just one county or city. And we don't put the, we don't detriment their program that they have in place also. So yeah, she's a huge part of that that process. And one of the biggest things is, is that we want people to know that when we do reach out, when other states reach out to us for, for, uh, for resources, uh, if we able, we will actually we'll do everything we can to meet that that need, but we'll never leave ourselves, you know, vulnerable to something happen here, and, and and we're not able to cover ourselves. We, you know, that's just that'd be poor planning. And I know uh, now Scott, um, uh, which is as I told you earlier, has been, of course, uh, uh, here in Office of Emergency Management longer than uh, anyone over here and had several different things under his belt. So I know where he's actually responded to different things uh, in different events um, here of, uh, in the past, uh, many of them. But uh, Scott, you want to talk about maybe uh, how some of that, what are some of the things that, how does it affect 
the biggest thing I like people to know is how does it affect you personally? Though? What is the one of the things that we deal with that we want people to know? We are human. I mean, you know, we run into things all the time that we deal with. And he's had a couple. Uh, the 2010 flood that comes to mind where he had a couple of close calls. But if you don't mind, Scott, I mean, tell them a little bit about some of the. Well, a lot of the things that we we're faced with. You know, we go out and. Our responsibility is, first of all, make sure everybody's safe. And if we can bring in additional resources, whether it's boats or um, rescue personnel to help get people to a safe area so we can see what the damage is going to be and, and what the consequences of the uh, situation is, um, getting the neighborhoods and the communities back up and running normal as quick as possible. But doing that, sometimes, you know, we find ourselves in spots that uh, you go into an area for example and you're able to drive into it and get to the point where you have a flooded neighborhood and you're being sure you're trying to get everybody out and calling for more resources while you're in there you know the waters are continuing to rise so you make it cut off from the way that you come in and you find yourself in a situation so not only you have to look out for the people you're there to help but you also have to keep a look out for your personnel and yourself uh, to be sure that you can get back out the way you come in not get yourself in a bad situation if we can't help ourselves we certainly can't help anybody else if we're you know become part of the problem so those type of things you have to keep in the back of your mind and just uh, keep a lookout of what your surroundings are and stuff and one of the, and one of the good things about when we do come together here before we uh, when we're in a crisis mode that's the great thing about it because here uh, we can collectively sit down and um, and try to take some of the emotion out of the scene. Because if you're on the scene, you know, as a responder, uh, you know, our first goal is to save lives, and um, and you can get caught up into that. But when we're here, so we can we can look at it. We've got so many different tools that, and I know Heidi can show you later with cameras and different gauges that we can look at. Uh, uh, especially when we start talking about the water department and some of the things that they do, where we can sit here and go, hey, is that safe? Is that neighborhood safe? You know, we're the estimate here of the way, the way the water is rising, that section of that neighborhood is going to be uh, subject to flooding. So we can send out, you know, PD, OEM, and other people to that area and say, hey, listen, you know, uh, you know, the flood waters are running, uh, are, are, are rising, and you know, we need to get an evacuation. So again. The thing about this office and the thing about the war room, it gives us an opportunity where it's not just me making a decision. I may be ultimately in charge of this, but it's collectively. I mean, I wouldn't be anything if I didn't have these guys. I mean, I'll just tell you, because uh, I rely on them uh, every day. And, 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 and you know, it, it, I am responsible, but again, it's a collective. Uh, and, and, and this is a small, just us, but we're talking about when this room is full. And it is a major, like the 2010 flood, we can go there because that's just one everybody can be can relate to. Yeah. It's 24 hours? It's, it's as long as it needs to be. And not just 24 hours, I mean, it could be days and weeks. Uh, but here as of late, uh, the last uh, activation that we had, it was during the um, actually high wind. Uh, it was uh, We had straight line winds, possible flooding, and tornadoes. And we did a 24-hour stint. And then the other time, it was 18 hours. But those are typical, you know. But um, a lot of times, uh, is is no time put to it because, for instance, let's just say we know if we're lucky, and the national weather tells us that this afternoon at four o'clock has a possibility of a, of a tornado. So we want to activate. Uh, activation means we pull people here. But maybe we just need a partial activation. A partial activation means we don't need everybody. You know, but we need certain people again who we think will be affected or who can help us take care of the situation. So maybe we have, you know, 18 uh, different departments here. And if we say we're going to activate at 1600 or 4 o'clock, then basically uh, it gives us time to now start strategizing with personnel because how long are we going to be here? We don't know. You know, uh, uh, so. There's no time limit on it. I mean, we, so we feed people here, you know, it's just like, you know, we've got everything that we, we, we need, uh, just like you would have at home. It's just you, you just don't have the, 
the comfort of uh, knowing that um, uh, you, you're protecting the citizens of Nashville, but yet, and sometimes it's difficult because, but, but you're here and your family's at home. So sometimes that's one of the things that, uh, as a provider, and we know that, I mean, we signed up for that. We've signed up to, to serve the citizens of Nashville, and I wouldn't change it for the world. All of us in here have what we call a servant heart. But you have to leave your family, and that sometimes is difficult because, you know, I know Heidi's got a young child, and uh, and so does uh, uh, Chief or Survey, and of course, you know, um, um, and you know, I've, I've got you know, a young son as well, and, and sometimes it, uh, it's difficult because, you know, you're leaving your, you know, your loved ones and you got to be here, but that's our job, you know, and that's what we paid, uh, served, uh, uh, signed up for, and, uh, but again, it's not, it's not a job for us, it's a career, because we all love it, all of us. We love what we do. And I, and I would dare say, you ask anybody from FIRE, OEM, PD, you know, any of these people, I mean, they love what they do, they wouldn't do it.